Hey everyone, Mark here. Today I'm going to be covering how to fly the turboprops in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Specifically, I'll be looking at the TBM 930, but a lot of the concepts I'm going to be going over are going to apply to any of the turboprops, whether it's the TBM, the Cessna 208, or the King Air. I'm going to assume if you're watching this video that you have some experience with flight sim, probably with propeller-based airplanes, whether they're single or dual-engined. As such, I'm going to point out the major differences between the prop-based planes and the turboprop planes and where you have to learn to adjust. One of the main reasons people look to move up to a turboprop is because they want to get somewhere faster and all of the turboprops that come in the standard version of the game are going to give you quite the bump in airspeed. The TBM is the fastest of the turboprops, but it's also the most difficult to fly and that's why I'm looking at that one today to give you a couple of tips to make things go a little bit easier for you. If you've watched other videos on this channel, you know that I'm a huge fan of the Cessna 208 and I've used it in a bunch of videos already. It's the slowest of the three turboprops, but I personally find it to be the most enjoyable to fly. There's also the King Air that comes with the standard version of the game, but it's slightly more complex than the TBM with its second engine, so I tend to avoid it. There are actually a few reasons why you might want to fly one of the turboprops. The first one, like I already mentioned, is that you would just want to get to your destination a whole lot faster. And that will definitely work. If you fly any of the turboprops, you're going to get there probably somewhere in the order of one and a half to three times faster than you would with either the Cessna 172 or 152. Another reason you might want to fly one of the turboprops is that you want to actually fly higher. You can do that easily in these airplanes because the cabin's going to be pressurized and that allows these planes to have a much higher cruise altitude. Finally, the turboprops are great planes to learn how to do instrument flying. They've got every feature you might want or need to fly in inclement weather. I'm going to jump into the cockpit now so we can have a look at the differences you need to be aware of when moving to a turboprop airplane. Before we do that, I do want to remind you if you do get some value out of this video, please make sure to hit like and subscribe. Alright, so just before I jump into the cockpit, as you can see, I've set up a very short flight from Oahu over to Molokai. You can get away with flying turboprops without a flight plan, especially the Cessna 208 since it's a little bit slower. But I recommend creating one anyways because things tend to happen a lot faster in the turboprops and you don't have as much time to figure out where you're flying. I used the VOR to VOR option to create the flight plan and I'm going to be using it more as a guide. I won't be following it too strictly. I've set my cruise altitude to be around 7,500 feet. I'm going to have to be careful not to exceed the 250 knot maximum that you're allowed under 10,000 feet because this airplane is really fast when it gets going. You can see it also calculated my descent waypoint. I'm not going to be using that because instead I'm going to be descending at a much slower airspeed than what the flight plan is telling me to. I made the calculations myself of when I want to start my descent and if you need a refresher on that, I've made a video on how to calculate the descents for VFR flights, so make sure to check that out if you haven't already, I'll add a link to it right above me. Alright, I'm in the cockpit now and I do want to review one quick difference between propeller based planes and turboprop planes and that's to do with the throttle. I usually get everything running by hitting the control E shortcut in the game and that's going to start the engine for me automatically. I've never really been interested in figuring out which switches to flip left and right to get the engine up and running, so I just used a shortcut. There are other videos on YouTube if you are more interested in figuring out how to start the engines yourself. You can find them pretty easily just by searching for them in YouTube. So let's have a look at the throttle quadrant for this airplane. There's a few extra features here that I'm going to point out. The first one is the reverse thrust, which you get because we're now using a turbine engine rather than a piston based engine. The reverse thrust is going to come in pretty useful if you need to slow down in a hurry once you've landed. To activate it though is a little bit special and what you've got to do is you've got to bind a key to the toggle reverse thrust control which you can find by going into the control options and then searching for reverse. You're going to see that's going to come up with a few different options and what you're looking for is the toggle throttle reverse thrust. What I've done is I've mapped it to a key on my keyboard, in this case control R. So the moment I've landed, if I want to go into reverse thrust, what I've got to do is hit the control R shortcut and then my throttle now controls the reverse thrust instead of forward thrust. So I'm not moving right now, I've got my parking brake on. If I were to apply throttle normally, you can see the throttle goes up just like it normally would for any other airplane. 
Now, if I want to get into the reverse thrust, all I do is I hit my shortcut key, which is Control R. And now when I apply throttle, you can see that it's going through the reverse thrust section. That's going to allow me to control either the forward or reverse thrust with just that single button. And then if I hit Control R again, you can see the throttle is now going back towards the center. On the right hand side of the throttle, you can see there's a few different things as well. There's a fetter option and there's a low and high idle and a cutoff section. If you're using the Control E shortcut to get everything going, you really don't need to worry about this. It's really what you would be using if you're starting the engine manually. But in my case, since I'm using the auto start, I don't worry about it at all. You could slide it over to the low idle position if you're just sitting on the tarmac for a bit of time, but really in the game there's not much point. Alright, so I'm pretty much ready to go now and I'm probably just going to skip forward to the runway since there's nothing much to see between here and there while taxiing. Before we get to that though, I do want to remind you, if you do get some value out of this video, please make sure to hit like and subscribe, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them below. The first major difference that you're likely to notice with a turboprop is the jet lag. What I mean by that is that when you start applying power, it's actually going to take a few seconds for the engine to spool up. It's not that big of a deal on takeoff because as you're taking off, the airspeed's just building up, but as we're going to see on landing, it can become a little bit of a problem. Another major difference with turboprops is that when you're doing your takeoff roll, you don't just apply full power. What you want to do is find the maximum amount of power you can add without putting the engine in the red zone as well as keeping the turbine temperature out of the red zone as well. So what you've got to do on takeoff is apply close to full power, see where your torque lands and depending on that you need to adjust accordingly. On any given day for a time, temperature and weather, the maximum amount of power you're going to have available for takeoff is going to vary. So I can't really tell you what it's going to be. It'll be pretty close to full obviously, but it's not going to be full power either. Although the amount of power you're going to need to use is going to vary, the pitch you're going to want to use is somewhere between 7.5 and 11.5 and degrees. That's going to result in an airspeed of around 124 knots and a vertical speed of around 2,500 feet per minute. The other thing you're going to want to do once you're airborne is turn on something called the yaw damper. The yaw damper is going to keep your airplane in coordinated flight. That means you're not going to have to use the rudder pedals to stay coordinated as you're turning in the game. You can activate the yaw damper by pressing the button on the instrument panel just on the right right there. I think of it like a cruise control but for the airplane because once you have the yaw damper activated, you don't need to keep your feet on the rudder pedals. The plane is just automatically going to stay coordinated for you. You want to turn the yaw damper on once you're airborne, but you also want to turn it off just before landing. Otherwise, you might end up fighting the yaw damper if you're landing in some strong winds. Once you've reached pattern altitude, you're going to want to transition to your climb attitude. And that's where you're going to want to use probably around 90% of full power with a pitch up attitude of 10 degrees, which is going to result in an airspeed of 145 knots and around 2,300 feet per minute climb. While I'm climbing out to cruise altitude, I'll point out a few other differences with the turboprop engines. One thing you're going to notice if you pay attention to the torque gauge is that it's going to drop the higher you go. The opposite is true for the ITT, which is the turbine temperature gauge. It's going to go higher as you increase in altitude. That means that as you're climbing to your cruise altitude, you need to keep an eye on the ITT gauge and make sure it doesn't get into the red zone. If you do see it go into that red part of the gauge, you want to reduce power a little bit to make sure to keep it out of there. What all of this means really is that as you increase in altitude, the maximum speed that's possible for the airplane is going to drop because the higher you are, the less power you're going to have available to you. Another thing that I've read that I feel is pretty well represented in the game is that the controls feel a lot lighter once you're at higher altitudes in the turboprops. 
try to have a little bit of a lighter touch than you normally would as you get higher because otherwise you might end up like you're feeling like you're on a roller coaster with the nose going up and down and up and down. All right, I've reached my cruise altitude at this point and I'm going to set the power to around 70% with a pitch of zero degrees, which is going to end up resulting in around an airspeed of 205 knots in straight and level flight. Before moving on, I do want to talk about the de-icing features of this airplane. You'll probably be flying at altitudes that were much higher than what you were flying before, and that means you're at more of a risk of ice forming, especially depending on where you're flying. So because of that, it's important to remember to toggle the de-ice switches that are just on the bottom left of the instrument panel. They keep the wings, propeller, and engines from accumulating any ice on or inside of them. Icing is both visually and physically simulated in the game, and you're definitely going to notice it if you're flying somewhere where it's cold, especially on the windshield and on the body of the airplane. Before moving on, I do want to remind you, if you do get any value out of this video, please make sure to hit like and subscribe. And if you have comments or questions on something that I did, feel free to put it in the comments below. I've already started my descent into Molokai, and obviously my airspeed was quite high as I started my descent. So I had a fair bit of airspeed to bleed off before I get to my approach airspeed. One neat thing about flying the turboprops is that you can close the throttle almost completely without having to worry about the engines cooling down too quickly. That means you can make your descent pretty steeply and continue to lose airspeed while you do it. The configuration that I found best works for me is to set the power to near zero and to have a pitch down attitude of around two and a half degrees. That's going to result in an airspeed of around 140, 145 knots and a vertical airspeed of around minus 1300 feet per minute. Once you do reach your approach altitude, you're going to want to pull the nose up to around two and a half degrees. That's going to result in a straight and level pitch and an airspeed of around 120 knots if you set the power to 25%. Make sure to bring the power back up to 25% before you reach your target airspeed. Because if you wait until you get there, you're going to end up losing even more airspeed and probably have to add more power to get back to where you want to be. And that's all because the turbine engine needs some time to spool up. This is one of the harder planes to fly on approach and landing because of the way the airplane is built. You can see the frame of the airplane is really in your field of view. So when you're going to be turning and looking for the airport, it's a whole lot harder than it is with some of the other planes in the game. Now that I'm on final, I'm going to extend the landing gear and get ready for landing. I'm going to pay even closer attention to the airspeed now because of that spool up time of the engine. I need to be really careful not to get too low and if I do to add power a little bit earlier than I normally would in a piston plane. I'm also going to extend the last little bit of flaps and you can see that the airspeed trend indicator little purple line on the right of the airspeed tape is telling me that the airspeed is going to continue to drop unless I add more power. So I'm actually going to end up with somewhere around 25 to 30 percent of power on the engine for landing and I'm going to leave it there all the way till I get to the ground because it's going to allow me to have just a slightly smoother landing than I would otherwise. You can see I'm still coming up short, so I need to continue to apply more power to slow my descent rate down just a little bit more until I get back to that perfect glide slope. There we go. So now you can see my airspeed is a little bit lower than I like as well, but I'll continue flying it like this. I don't want to add too much power either, and I think I'll be okay here. This airplane is honestly one of the harder ones to land in the game, at least I find, because it's just so much more complex and there's just so much more going on all at once. And as usual, I'm going to aim for my landing point in the distance right there and I'm going to try and set the wheels down right at the landing point indicated on the runway. And as soon as I do, and that's going to be just in a second here, there we go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly hit my control R shortcut and start applying full power so that the engine goes full reverse and you can hear it in the background there to bring my airspeed down as fast as possible. 
I barely even need to use the brakes when I use the reverse thrust. And once obviously the airplane has slowed down enough, I come out of reverse thrust and just continue taxiing until I can get off the runway. All right, that is a quick overview of the differences between turboprops and propeller base planes and how to fly the TBM 930 in the game. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them below. And if you got some value out of this video, again, please make sure to hit like and subscribe. It really makes a big difference.